Hi, I'm Tim Alden. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple belt. Real easy. We already got a straight edge on our Herman Oak veg tan hide and I'm going to make this belt an inch and a half wide. I have a set screw that I've drilled and I just leave this strap cutter at an inch and a half. It's actually a sixteenth under. That way if I stamp or carve a belt and it expands just a little bit, it stays the right width for my buckles. So anyway, we're just going to uh, cut our strap here. The main thing is you want some pressure to the inside. You don't want any daylight in between the front of your belt strap and the back. If you get a little gap in there, it'll start veering off. You also want to make sure that you're clear of your table because if you bump up next to your table, it'll start pushing you off before you know it. You'll kind of have a gap there. So you want to be a good distance from your table. Keep everything square. You don't want to tip your strap cutter because you'll mark the next strap. So we're going to keep this level and we're just going to pull back on it. This rolled up and out of the way. So now that we've got our strap cut here, I usually put the tip end at the butt of the hide. You get a few wrinkles down towards the neck. So this has got a pretty good blemish in the hide. So we're just going to slide that up to just before that. And you'll notice on this uh, template, it's slightly smaller than an inch and a half width. And the reason for that is when you trace your pattern on, it fits an inch and a half belt. You can just roll right around and have a smooth transition. If it was the actual width of the belt, you'd end up with little corners here. So we've made that a little bit smaller than the belt width on purpose. And so we can mark our middle hole here. And then we're going to slide this down to whatever length we want from the fold at this slot hole to the middle hole of our belt. And so we're going to make a 34 inch belt here. And we want that 34 to be right on the halfway mark for that little slot. So we're just going to trace around the back of this. And so we want to make sure that's good and centered. And this is a template that you can purchase on our website. So we just marked the back two holes. And the reason for that is, is sometimes the thickness of the belt or the thickness of the bar, you might need to close this gap or lengthen this gap. And so we just leave it, you can mark two holes, you can adjust your center slot, fold it in half and mark the others. Okay, so now we have our belt measured out here. <clears throat> Go ahead and cut this. So I'm just gonna rough cut it. The reason I do this rough cut is the thicker veg tan leather will bind up when you roll around that corner when this flares to the outside. And so if you have less resistance, that knife is going to be able to uh, roll around that corner. And I'm just kind of rocking it. And I keep my hand, you don't want your hand out here, just want to rock it. And roll around there. You want to cut until you're absolutely square with the belt. That way you don't get a little bump there. If you just cut to where the line is, you'll end up having a little corner there. 
So now that we got that side done, we'll go ahead and cut the other side. Knock these corners off too. That way when we go around that curve, we don't have as much resistance. So I usually start on this side and cut it first because I have more material to hold on to here. Same thing, I'm just kind of rocking it and sliding it forward with this thumb. And I'm keeping my fingers up and out of the way. Blades never pointing at them. My right hand is the rudder. You're going to do this completely right handed. You want your free hand way out of the way. And you can just roll that around, cut a nice edge. So we're going to go ahead and mark the rest of our holes. We'll cut the edges with our edger. We'll throw some oil on it, finish it up. Okay, so just want to make sure our template is centered in the belt. I'm just going to put a little dot in the center of each hole. Now we'll go ahead and <clears throat> punch these holes. I like a number five oval punch from Weaver, and I've actually tapered this down a little bit. That way it doesn't spread the hole as much. And it depends on the size of tongue you have for your belt. And so sometimes we'll use a little bit bigger tongue on a belt. A lot of times we'll just use the number five hole punch. I want to make sure that oval is running long ways with the belt. You can tap it. Make sure. Got those holes punched. This is a number six or three sixteenth inch Osborne hole punch. And we're going to use that for Chicago screw hole. And for this one, we're going to use a number or a one inch slot punch. And this is a Weaver brand slot punch. And then we're going to fold this in half. And we'll mark our other holes. Go ahead and wet this, fold it in half. Mark our holes. We also always fold these the opposite direction because it'll kind of crease and stretch that leather out. That way when you fold it the opposite way, it's already stretched and you don't get cracks coming across there. Okay, so now that we got all our holes punched, we're gonna wet our edge just a little bit. We got a number two Barry King edger here. So now that we got our edges cut, we're going to go ahead and put some oil on it, let that dry a little bit, 
We'll burnish the edges and put a buckle on it. Okay, so we got our brass buckle here. We got matching brass, Chicago screws. And so if I knew the person was gonna keep this buckle, I would probably put Loctite on. The stuff that I have doesn't come apart very well. So I'm not gonna put Loctite on this because we may swap the buckle out. But we're just gonna go ahead and put the uh, larger side on the outside. Screw end is going to go on the inside. Put that tight. So there we have a simple, plain, classy belt. It's going to last a really long time. This is probably eight ounce Herman Oak veg tan. And so it's just a good using everyday belt. Thanks for stopping by.